Fire is a tool that can bring us comfort and convenience. It's also a weapon of deadly destruction that time and time again has taught us the dangers of messing with it and torn us down. It's made even more deadly when there's nowhere to go and the forces of nature come together to seal our fate. Today, we discuss what happens when fire breaks out at sea and there's nowhere to go. Let's talk about what happened to the MV Conception. Labor Day weekend 2019 at 4.04 a.m. on August 31st. The MV Conception departed Santa Barbara Harbor in Long Beach, California to head for a dive near Albert Anchorage. The NV Conception was a 75-foot diving boat that was born in Long Beach in 1981. It contained three decks and could hold up to 103 people, including passengers and crew. The lower level contained the passenger bunks, which had two exits in case of emergency. The Conception, one of three dive boats owned by Truth Atlantics, built for the sole purpose of exploring the Channel Islands in Southern California. It has been renovated once in 2005 after it was stolen and run aground, a process that cost over a million dollars. This would have been a great time to make the boat more fire-resistant, fitting it with working smoke detectors and sprinklers as well as safer materials. However, the conception came in just under the size requirements to be fitted with such things. So, instead, it was constructed with wood covered in fiberglass, which was considered safe in 1978 and didn't violate any regulations. That's the thing about a lot of old regulations. It takes a great tragedy and the loss of a lot of lives to change them. Let's see how it worked out for them. 33 passengers were on board that day, along with six crew members. By 8.30 a.m., they had arrived at their dive spot on the south side of Santa Cruz Island. After breakfast and a small mishap with a passenger fainting, the boat was off to the eastern side of the island and anchored in Smuggler's Cove for the night. From 8.30 to 9.30 p.m., there was a night dive at Quail Rock. Afterwards, the divers returned with all their cameras, flashlights, and phones in need of charging. Sounds pretty standard so far. Except one crew member did recall that when he plugged in his phone that night, he saw sparks. I'm sure it's nothing to worry about. Well, boats made at the time of the conception were clearly not outfitted for incredible electrical feats. This spark should have raised some concern about the amount of devices the passengers would need to charge for the evening, but it was simply overlooked. Likely cause in place, the passengers retired to the lower deck to get some sleep, unaware of the dangers that lay just hours away. At about 2.30 a.m., the second galley hand woke up to the sound of a pop, thinking it was a restless crew member or a passenger. He got out of bed to find a raging fire already taken place on the main deck below. At this point, it had already spread enough to block the crew members in, none of which had been at watch that night. Trapped on the upper deck, the galley hand returned to wake the other crew members and make two mayday calls from the wheelhouse. Desperate, the five crew members jumped down to the main deck since their proper exit was blocked and one broke his leg in the process. The fire was raging on, blocking the port and starboard exterior hallways, trapping the 33 passengers below deck. All firefighting stations on the boat were also blocked, by the flames. The captain was busy making mayday calls in the wheelhouse, transmitting that he couldn't breathe before jumping directly overboard into the ocean. The second captain and other crew members thought he might have caught fire, so they jumped in after him to help. All crew members in the water, they didn't intend to abandon the passengers just yet. The second captain and first deckhand grabbed a nearby dinghy and padded back to the conception where they tried desperately to get to the lower decks and start the fire pump since the ship still had power. Thick smoke blocking their breathing in sight, 
they only managed to lower another lifeboat into the water before the captain demanded that they abandon ship again. The trapped passengers were never seen, unable to even come up for air as the boat burned around them in their sleep. Now, the captain's choice to abandon ship so quickly did work against the rescue of this boat. Not only was the emergency never explained to the Coast Guard that it was a fire, but their exact location was never spelled out due to the quick choice to jump flailing into the water and never come back. The best the Coast Guard could do was dispatch helicopters and boats to the approximate location. It wasn't until 4.32 a.m. when the first responders arrived at the site of the burning boat. The fire was continuing to be a royal pain as it burned through the anchor tether and the conception started drifting slowly towards an island heavy with flammable vegetation. It was 4.55 a.m. before the first fireboat arrived and they were able to tow cable the boat back out to deeper waters. The whole time, the first responders searched the waters for any survivors, but there were none to be found. By 5.23 a.m., the fire was reported extinguished, even though pesky hot spots kept reigniting. They attempted to tow the Conception back to shallower waters for recovery, but it sank on the way, putting a final end to the nightmare at 6.54 a.m. All 33 passengers and one crew member below deck were killed in the blaze. By September 2nd, 25 of the bodies were recovered from the deaths, but the last eight remained missing. But who was to blame? The ship was never capable of handling all the devices that were being charged. It was never outfitted to handle such a fire, but it was still under regulations at the time of refurbishment. Crew members who survived said that there was a working smoke detector on board, but they believed that it was only going off locally and not connected to the wheelhouse. The one man who was hit with 34 counts of manslaughter, fittingly, was the captain, whose inattention to duties, cowardice, and negligence made things worse. He pled not guilty in February of 2021. The Coast Guard also had a lawsuit filed against it by the families of the victims, stating that its failure to enforce the regulations led to the fire. Let me know who you think is to blame in the comments below. A memorial for the loss was erected outside of Sea Landing in Santa Barbara Harbor. The Coast Guard was urged to revise its regulations on certain sized boats to avoid this disaster in the future. It's just another case of many had to die for things to change. Thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing for more true crime and horror, as well as bad horror movie reviews. Game with me on Twitch every Saturday, follow me on Twitter, and as always, be well.